Hi, I'm Neil, and today we're going to look at several adjustments on the Juki LU562 that I have here, which is the same as the LU563. Okay, first off, we're going to start by showing you how to time the machine. Needle corresponding here to the hook. I turn to always turn the machine towards you, or the hand wheel towards you. So you bring the needle bar all the way down the bottom dead center and then I'll have the camera follow my fingernail up the needle bar okay to where the bush where the needle bar disappears inside the, the rock frame here when I measure down an eighth of an inch roughly it can be a little bit a little bit less a little bit more but we want we're about an eighth of an inch and then I'll turn my hand wheel towards me and bring my fingernail up flush with the bushing Okay, and at that point, you follow my fingernail back down, you're going to see the point of the hook, which is right there at the end of my screwdriver, is right against the needle, right at the needle at that point, when this needle bar has traveled up an eighth of an inch. Now, if you have to do adjustments, we'll tip the machine back. up here now these screws here you'll see a screw there and a screw there those are on a flat groove you shouldn't you shouldn't move those those ones what you want to do is move this gear that's down below it right here where the screwdriver sits I'm going to turn the hand wheel and I will tie, loosen this screw first and then I would turn, keep turning back around again until I see the first screw that comes to view first. There's two together. There's this one and this one here. I just loosen that screw. So I'm going to loosen the screw that's on that flat groove. And what I would do is move this gear to the right to bring the hook this way. Or I would move this gear to the left. I want that hook to go that way. And you do move this gear back and forth to get that adjustment so that that point of the hook is sitting at the needle when that needle bar has gone up an eighth of an inch. Needle bar travels down. I'm turning the hand wheel towards me. Bring the needle bar all the way down to bottom dead center. I'm going to take a measure on the needle bar an eighth of an inch from where it disappears up into the rock frame okay and I've got about an eighth of an inch this machine doesn't have timing marks some do some don't this one doesn't so I'm just kind of guessing an eighth of an inch here uh, okay my needle bar has gone up an eighth of an inch and at that point that point of the hook which is right there where my screwdriver sits should be right in the needle and it's not so what I want to do is turn that hook that much about another quarter of an inch. So in order to do that, I'll tip the machine back. <clears throat> and like I was showing you there just earlier on that big gear, I'm gonna loosen this second screw that comes to view. First, I just turn backwards just slightly here and loosen this first screw that comes to view. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna drive this gear to the right. It's going to turn that hook this way. Okay, that's that screw. And then the second one that comes to view. Okay, bring that needle bar all the way down as low as it'll go. Do that eighth of an inch with the needle bar. Bring it up. And there we go. She's sitting right in the needle. Okay. Now at that point, I want to make sure it's tight enough to the needle. And you can see there's play. When I push that needle to the right, I can see it bouncing quite a bit before it actually touches the point of the hook. So what I want to do there, I'm going to get it a little bit tighter this way. So I'm going to loosen this screw. 
that one there. I'm going to bring the cactus that way. And come over just slightly. Doesn't need to be much. See that it's there's no play there left at all when I push the needle. And that's what we want. Now, next we'll show you how to adjust the height of your needle bar when you have done done your eighth of an inch and your timing with the hook. You're satisfied with that. The needle bar could have moved as well, up or down. So I'll show you what that adjustment is. First, we're going to take. Open up this slide plate. I'll have the camera come over here in just one moment. I'll show you where it is. So we'll just move this over here. And if you're able to zoom in, and you see the point of the hook, okay, would be right sitting right in the scarf and the needle. There's the top part of the scarf. Where my screwdriver is and then about an eighth of an inch below that is the eye and the needle and you want the point of the hook to be right going right through the center when you've done your timing and you're satisfied with the needle bar going up an eighth of an inch and you've turned to have your hook turned around so it's sitting in at the needle you want it in the scarf of the needle and if it isn't you you see the screw right there I would loosen that screw and move my needle bar up or down so that the point of the hook would be sitting right in the middle of the scarf and the needle. And that's your needle bar adjustments. Okay, next I'll show you what would what you would do if you've caught thread up in your bobbin case base and seized it seized the machine up. In other words, the way it's supposed to work is the hook is traveling around this base. This base is in underneath this black plate. See, and as you see, the hook would travel around. Now, if it gets caught up with thread, it's going to snap the clutch out over on the right-hand side, and all of a sudden you're going to see the needle bar and everything is turning. Nothing's turning down below. Because that's it's, it's throwing the clutch out. So once you're happy that you've cleaned the thread out from in around there and you're able to get this base to turn, you would take this plate off, the throat plate, and you take the feed bags off if you wanted to, just so that you had a clear view of what's going on. And if it had thread caught in it, you wouldn't be able to turn this, which is the bobbin case base. So you would have to take, turn things around here, and take out this little tiny screw there, a little tiny screw there take that gib off once you've taken the gib off you can tap with a screwdriver just a little enough so that that base will turn around to a certain point in this area here between the point of the hook and over to the right hand side of it if, if, the, if the hook comes around to that point when you move the base around you've tapped the base around to that point it'll pop out and then you clean your thread out and put it all back together. Once you're happy with that, everything is turning. Now you're going to take this button over here on the bed, right there. And you're going to push that button down and turn backwards. And what that does, when you turn backwards, with the camera focus right in on the right hand side of the clutch there, you're going to see this is the main shaft and it's turning. If I turn it around here, this this piece here, this half moon piece with the little notch where my fingernail is, is supposed to sit in right here. So when I push the button down, this little finger here that's got a little spring on it is going to put pressure on that groove right there and snap this back into there. And as I hold the button down, keep turning, it comes the button comes up against this cog right here and keeps the shaft from moving. And it's going to turn and snap everything. It takes quite a bit of pressure. And you can hear it snap back into place. And at that point, the clutch has been snapped back in. 
Now sometimes what happens is that spring right there falls off and this little finger does what it wants to flop around. So it won't grab that so you can play with this button on your bed all day long trying to turn backward to get it to snap into place and it just won't snap in because it's the, the spring has been sprung. So if you're in that case just use gravity and have everything turned up when you're turning back so that this finger will fall down in that area all by itself and do the same thing that I just did. Or you take a flat headed screwdriver, get into these points right here and tur tur take and turn clockwise. Once you've lined everything up, this, this piece here with, with the main shaft, you take and you take your screwdriver and take turn clockwise and it'll snap back in as well. And that would be your clutch adjustments. Okay, next we're going to replace this take-up spring. I'll take a loosen the screw off here, take it out. Okay, I'm going to loosen the screw right in here. Right there. Okay, and I'm going to pull the whole assembly out. So we're looking at it. I'm going to loosen the screw off here. Polish right out. Sometimes it's easier said than done. <clears throat> Pick the pressure off there. And that's your take up spring. Now to replace that, put that back on, of course, there's a little notch right in here that the, the end of the spring fits into. Once you've got it on there, I'm going to take and put the whole unit back into place. Moving that spring up out of the way, stretching it just enough so everything will go back on again. Okay. I'm happy with that, it's in the place. I'll leave that screw off of there and I'll put the assembly back into place. Okay. do is put the top screw in first keep the assembly in the place here <coughs> okay I'm happy with that and then we're going to take and wind the stud down or counterclockwise to put more spring on there and you just need a good a good tension on it Tighten that screw back up. Just right in there. Just so it doesn't turn back on us. And then I'll take put the nut back on the place. Put everything back together. Okay, and that's your take up spring replacement. Okay, next is all your oiling points. Now I've, I've marked this machine with all red marks, which is all the, the spots you want to oil. Okay, I'm just going across here, just oiling everything I can see. That, that's got the red mark on it. Some of them's got uh, wicks built into it. And then I put a little bit of oil on the outside here. Down here by this wing nut. Over here by, by the needle bar. We've got those two spots, that, I'm going to go down on the base, put a little few drops here. Over here, a very important factor would be the base and the hook. See how the hook travels around the base? About once every two days, or if you're doing a lot of sewing, once a day. Put a drop right in there so it runs around the hook itself. And some of the other moving parts down in there, just put a drop down again. We'll turn the, mach tip the machine back. And I like to oil anything that's going to move. So I'm looking here, there's the, uh, the main bearing there. See it's right here, put a little bit of oil. Up 
here in these linkages. Okay, I'm working my way over. See the shaft is turning there. Put a little oil in there. There. And around the gears. Over here with this feed feed frame here. Put a little oil down in there. Work my way back up here on this shaft. Just wherever they go into the casing, put a drop of oil. Can't have too much in this area. Okay, and the last part spot is just in the, the linkage itself over here. We've opened up the faceplate. Put a couple of drops, you can see little holes in there, just anything that moves, put a little bit on the pressure bar, a little bit on the needle bar, a little bit here on your take-up lever, you see up, up in there, a little bit in that. Not a whole lot of oil here because it's going to drip out onto your, whatever you're working at. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, next you do your oiling. Next we'll talk about the tension on the belt and clutch adjustments. As you can see the belt is fairly tight here. So what we're going to do is go in underneath on the motor itself. I'm going to loosen this nut off right here. Loosen that off. Yeah, I'm just going to loosen it and bring it up just slightly, just over half, half an inch. And I'm going to squeeze the belt together so it hauls that motor up. And then tighten that nut back up again right at that point. Bring the bottom one up to, to meet. And then tighten those two nuts up. camera back up to look at the belt here and as you can see I've got it squeezed about halfway in and what that will do will make it easier to control the machine when you start out the tighter the belt is the faster it might take off on you now we'll go back in underneath the machine and we'll check the clutch adjustments as you can see the actuating lever going down all a good inch and a quarter or so so what we'll do, I'm going to bring the clutch up to meet, so there's not quite as much play there. So we'll loosen the screw off, which is the screw for the brake. I'm going to loosen this nut off here. And I'm going to turn this down. And what that's going to do, it's going to haul this lever down closer to the motor, where the motor runs at one speed. So bring that down right there. I just want just a little bit of play between the clutch and the motor. In other words, if you get it too tight to the motor, it's going to try and run the machine when you start the motor up. You don't want that. So tighten this. Tighten the screw back up for the brake. And you see there's just a little bit of play with what you want. Now, if you have to bring this lever down too far by winding this nut in because the clutch is getting worn that bad, of course that hauls this lever down, then you're going to have to take and loosen this screw on the pitman rod to bring your pedal back up again. But this still got a good angle on it, the clutch not that worn. And that would be your clutch adjustments. Okay. Next we're going to fill a bobbin. I'm going to go through the bobbin winder at this point, around the tension, come over to your bobbin, through the hole there. I'm going to push the bobbin in against the belt. And I've got the machine unthreaded, there's no thread in the needle or anything, so I can start running these. You can also through, fill a bobbin as you're sewing, of course. Fill this up. the spring here is for 
if it overfills and starts filling the outside of the bobbin you would wind this screw counterclockwise it's going to bring this spring up in the air so that when the thread hits it it's going to snap it off if it underfills and snaps off before you've got enough thread and enough thread on your bobbin then you would turn this counterclockwise or clockwise I should say not clown and that would put more bobbin more thread on your bobbin now if it's filling too much to the left or too much to the right you would adjust it back here by moving this way this tension to your right to put more thread on the right hand side of the bobbin or to your left to put more thread on the left hand side of the bobbin and that's how those bobbin winders work Okay, next we're going to put thread the machine as well as the bobbin. Okay, your bobbin, I like to put it in so it's going to spin counterclockwise. Drop her down in there. Close your lid. Drop your thread down in that groove. Just give it a little bit of tug so it gets down in underneath the spring there and you've got tension on your, your bobbin case. And next we'll go back up here, take our top thread. Go through one of those eyes, skip a couple of them, go down through the bottom one, just as long as you got a basic loop. Next one here, we'll go down through the first hole, skip the second, go into the third. That's all you would need. And go around our tension assembly. And I like to take on the right hand side of my right hand, just drop that thread in around that pin. So it stays in there. Sometimes what happens, the thread will work out of your tension if you don't have that in there. In around your take your take up spring, so that's working. Up through this guide, through your take up lever. Okay, back down through these guides. Okay, through this guide here your needle thread guide and then of course through your needle. The needle is a long groove on the left side the scarf of course on the right and the scarf is always to your right long groove to your left and you thread the needle left to right okay, and like any machine I'm going to pick up my bobbin thread And there we go, we're all ready to go. Okay, next is tension adjustments. Now we've got our, bo our, our bobbin case base here all threaded and I've got a fairly good heavy drag there, which is what I want. You don't want it real, real heavy, it just you know, it takes more to balance. You gotta increase your top tension to balance. You got more tension down here. But you want a, want a nice drag to it, so I'm happy with that. So we're going to put a piece of material underneath there, close our plate, and just run a Now, as you noticed, what happened was I've wound, somebody come along and wound all of my tension off here, and what has happened was all the thread down underneath because I don't have any tension on the top and that's what would happen so in that case there clean everything up make sure that it hasn't driven the clutch out and a good way to tell is see if I can pick up my bottom thread everything seems to be turning no it hasn't driven the clutch out so I'm still good to go Close my plate and I know my thread was laying on the bottom here so I've got to increase the top tension. So I'm going to wind her up now you're going to count maybe about five times. Let's just try that and see what it does. Okay, you see I'm still laying on the bottom. I've got to increase it another couple of times. Two, Yeah, we're starting to lay there. I'm still laying on the bottom. 
camera can get close enough there you notice you see a little knot here every once in a while that means she's still laying on the bottom a little bit kind of hard on this material it's, I'm going to go another two turns of course if we get too tight then she's just going to lay on the top Now you can see we're laying in there now. It feels pretty good. Should be good. It basically looks almost the same from top to bottom. That's what you're after. And that's your tension adjustments. Stitch length adjustments. And with the LU562-63 Jukies, there's two buttons on your bed. The left button would be your stitch length adjustment. The right button is your clutch adjustments. So we're gonna go with our left button, we're gonna push it down, keep it pushed down, keep turning our hand wheel, and it's gonna fall into a groove. There, it fell into a groove. Once it's fallen in there, it fell into a groove, the button goes down further, keep the button pressed down. And if I turn my hand wheel towards me, until it stops, that would be my longest stitch length. And then I make sure the button pops up before I start to sew. Now it should, some, some machines show a, a number in here to what you're on, but, but they don't always correspond, so it's kind of a guessing game. So the, I know this is my longest stitch length. Okay, and that's working out to be about or about almost five stitches to the inch which is kind of long for most stuff so we want to shorten that up i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to hit this button down turn the hand wheel till it falls into a groove that groove that it falls into if i tipped my machine back is right there falls into this groove here and just holds this in the place while you turn your hand wheel and turns this piece next to it that just, just changes the, the eccentric for your stitch length. So what I'm going to do is push the button down again. Turn the hand wheel till it falls into a groove. There, fell in. Keep it down. I'm going to turn backwards just slightly, a little bit at a time. Again, make sure that button pops up by turning your hand wheel back and forth just ever so slight. And that's going to change my stitch length now. I should be a little bit shorter. Doesn't take much. Now we're about, oh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six stitches to the inch. And I'm going to change, turn the hand wheel, to always turn my hand wheel towards me until that button has fallen down, and then back up just slightly again. And then make sure the button pops up. And sometimes in, in, in the large bobbin machines, they have a tendency if you back up when you're changing your stitch length, they get the thread caught up. So you have to make sure you get your thread, that you're not all caught up with thread here before you start. Now we're about, oh, about eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight stitches per inch. And that's a good, a good stitch length. So that would be your stitch length adjustments. Okay, last step number 12, adjusting the height and the walk of your pressure feet. You can notice here, my inside foot, I'm down on my lowest adjustment. About to thick my screwdriver as it lifts there. And as my inside foot comes, about the same distance when it lifts as it's so. Now in some cases, you're crawling over a seam. might either stop trying to climb up over, it might stop when it climbs and spins there a couple minutes. I'm at a bobbin thread. But if it does that and sits there and wants to spin, then you would take and bring the camera up here. I'm going to loosen this wing nut here. This is on the LU563. If I haul this up on that slide and tighten it back up again, what it's going to do is change the height. So this is good for something if you're sewing with something with a lot of seams. Now you notice how to, how high everything is lifted. And that's for hard, harder to sew materials. 
but of course that's harder on your linkage. If you're sewing a lot of flat material like this, this denim is, I would have that wing nut adjusted all the way down. And that would be your height adjustments. I'm going to turn that wing nut back down about there. Now another adjustment. In some cases you're going to run into this where your outside foot might be lifting way high and the inside foot might be hardly lifting at all. So in that case there, I'm going to take and just have my outside foot lift ever so slightly. Let's try right about there. I'm going to go up here and loosen this screw here. And what that does, allows your inside foot to or outside foot to drop. Now it's dropped or in some cases you get to help it by pushing it down and then tighten that screw back up now let's see how that walks right now now you can see I've got I adjusted it a bit too much you can see the outside foot just barely lifting the inside foot's lifting way too high I like to have both of them even so now I'm going to take and lift the inside foot up just ever so slightly and do the same thing loosen that screw Push down on the foot, the inside foot, tighten it back up again. And now you can see, just lifting the no, but the thickness of my screwdriver, and so is the outside foot. And that's your pressure foot adjustments. Okay, thanks for watching. You can find us on the web at BridgewaterSewingCenter.com.